hello guys welcome back to my youtube page um there is an important information i would like to share with you today and before that i would like to appreciate everyone who has subscribed to this channel i really appreciate your support and um i'll keep on you know creating content that will add value to your graduate school application your graduate school journey and all that so uh, before i dive in into the video i have today uh, if you are new to this page i have done a couple of videos that will help you in your graduate school application process i've made a video on how you can search and send code emails to professors in your area of interest you can check that out i also made a video on how to search for graduate programs that has funding that also is a very good video for you and for those that are applying for the Shevening Scholarship, I have a video on that that I did uh, where I invited a couple of Shevening Scholars to share their experience and also check that and I've elaborated on the difference between graduate assistantship and you know the normal scholarships that you can apply for. You can check the video here and um, you know I have also shared my Commonwealth experience in three different videos. They are all here for you to go through it. So um, today, I want to talk about something very important that I've gotten a lot of, you know, questions and reactions when I made some tweets in that regard recently. And there is a tweet I made recently where I talked about that you can apply for PhD programs in the US with your, you know, with your bachelor's that you don't need you know, your master's degree to apply for a PhD program, you know, and uh, if you want to do that, you should consider your bachelor's PhD route. And in most cases, this is not, you know, stated categorically on the website of the universities. What you usually find is that the minimal requirement, they will just state that, oh, you need to have a first degree in related field or related program area or something like that for instance if you are applying for a phd program in civil engineering you are expected to have a bachelor's in civil engineering or a bachelor's in any area that relates to civil engineering like maybe building engineering and all you know related construction engineering and related areas right but what most guys you know don't know is that you can apply to phd program with your bachelor's most people don't know probably because they have not checked or they don't know that that such exists right so my aim today is to take you through you know some of the show you how you can check if the school you want to apply for accept bachelors right and why is this important because if 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 your aim is to do a phd program you don't need to first apply for master's program because i've seen a lot of folks who say oh i'm, I'm looking for I'm, I'm, I'm applying for a master's in this field in the us i want to apply for a master's program and their intention is not just to do masters they want to do phd after their masters right and you know in most cases here most programs especially stem related programs prioritize funding for phd programs they give more funding to phd applicants compared to masters even some program with stated categorically that they don't have funding for you know masters program right that is phd programs they have funding for like i know here in university of alabama i think um, political science and couple of other programs only give funding to PhD applicants. So if your aim is to is to do your PhD, then why should you go and apply for masters where you know that funding is not is not feasible, right? So the aim at the end of the day is to get funding for that program because you don't want to self-fund yourself you don't have that money to self-fund yourself and you need a you need you need a program that will give you funding right even though you are sent even if you want to send emails to faculties to request for 
you know, to, to be part of their research team and all that, they want people who can who can commit for a longer period of time. And usually that's a PhD candidate who can, you know, commit for four years, five years, not just a master's student that will just come in the first year, you are still settling down. The second year you are running up your program. So there's no much here you, you have done in the department because your first year is more like, oh, they would leave you to you know, do your coursework, settle down, and all that. You won't do much of, um, um, you won't take much responsibilities. You know, then your second year, that's when you start to do more of um, work teaching or research related um, works, right? So you need to understand that you can use your bachelor's to apply for a PhD program. So that's what I want to show you today how you can go about checking out if the school you want to apply for, the program you want to apply for, has funding for PhD program and not just has funding for PhD program because I have made a video on how you can check if the school has funding, you can check the video out and how you can send emails to faculty. So the, today's video is just about checking, okay, do they accept bachelors for this program? And if they do, then you can start preparing your application in that direction, right? Because you want to get funding, a PhD are more prioritized for funding, then it becomes important that you apply directly for PhD so you don't just get an offer, but you don't get funding. So let's go into it. Now, this is College of Engineering, Chemical and Biological Engineering want to check if they are, what is their minimum requirement for a PhD program. So let's go to graduate programs. There are a lot of graduate programs they have here. Right. So PhD program, degree requirements. This is degree requirement. So what, I, what we are looking for is admission requirements. So you can see here, applicant for graduate work in chemical or biological engineering must apply for admission to UA grad school, of course. The required regular admission may be granted to applicants who have a chemical engineering degree, a GRE, test score of 300 and above, CGP of 3 on a 4.0 scale, the applicant for related academic programs like chemistry, biological engineering, etc. will also be considered. You can read other information which is not of our interest at this point. So the major interest here is this, regular admissions may be granted to to applicants who have a chemical engineering degree and this a chemical engineering degree which is bachelor's to be precise right so you can see that for graduate work they didn't specify for masters or for a phd for graduate work because the reason why that is so is that graduate work here is considered both masters and PhD, you just need the same requirement, bachelor's for you to get into those programs. So once you have your bachelor's, you are eligible for a PhD program, and then you need to meet other requirements, minimum CGPA, GRE score, and different other requirements. Then you can see the type of financial assistance that the department offers. The department offers teaching and research assistance to outstanding applicants, right? So, and that also comes with a full tuition scholarship for the academic year. So once you maintain a good standing, you will continue to get those benefits for the continuing years, right? So, we have, we have established that they accept bachelors for a PhD or graduate program generally in this department. 
to make it clear this is not to say that if you have a master's you can apply to a phd program right if you have a master's that can even give you an edge or it can improve your 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 application because that shows that oh you have experienced grad school before right it can give you an edge right but the reason why i'm saying this is because if the reason why you are applying for master's program is because you know you need to do a master's first before you can apply for a phd then you should reconsider that right for instance if you just graduated from university and you feel like oh let me enroll to master's program first in my country and you know before i can start applying for phd program in the us or any other part of the world or if you want to say okay let me first apply for PhD, uh, master's program in the us first when i'm done with that i will go in to apply for for phd you can also do that but the thing there is that if the department you are applying to only prioritizes funding for phd applicant then you might stand no chance of getting funded at the end so why not take the the more um or a better route to achieve what you want and not go straight and apply for a phd program where you are still going to get a master's along the line so that's the reason why i'm saying this so i want to show you let's check another department and see what they got All right let's go back to ua So which other department should we search for? Let's check English. I also hear a lot of folks who say, oh, English language? They get they give funding for English related program. Yes. I know a lot of folks here who are studying English related programs, graduate programs. So let's see, admission. So for the English program, let's see what the what their requirements are. So what the requirement for PhD? You can see what you need to write the requirement, application requirement. Um, here you see that for the PhD program, successful applicant normally have a GP of three point five or better in masters or equivalent graduate work. Right. So this seems like for this program. You need to have a master's before you can apply for a PhD program. So this is an exception, right? So as I said earlier, you, you need to first check to know which is the primary thing expected for you to do. So you can see here that you need um, masters to apply for PhD, right? So I know folks who are currently here on their master's program in English, you get a test all and all that. So once they want to, once they finish that and they want to go to, to PhD, they can easily do that, right? So check what the requirement is for your specific program, and do accordingly. But I'm sure most science-related programs takes first degree. Okay, so let's check another school entirely. So let's go to um, 4icu.org. I know you, most of you might have seen this web page, you know, where you can easily see the French university around the world based on ranking, based on continents, or you know, different criteria. So in the US, let's, I usually use top universities in the US. And then if you want to check, any university you can easily go to that university here these are just the ranking by this website and uh, yeah so let's check uh, Louisiana State University Louisiana State University you know let's go to their website Louisiana State University okay so here research for 
which program should we search? Let me search for civil engineering. Let's see, PhD civil engineering. All right, so you can see we are here. So what are the requirements? That was what we are after. You can check the admission frequently asked questions, department requirements, graduate admission. So here, students who desire to obtain an MSc or PhD degree in civil are normally expected to hold a bachelor's degree in civil engineering from an accredited program. So that's what we are looking for, right? We've gotten that information, which is key. So, student who desire to obtain MSc or PhD. So, whether you are applying for an MSc or you are applying for a PhD, your bachelor's degree is what is required, right? So, we've confirmed that. And you can see the required CGPA is 3.0 on 4.0 scale. And you need to have 300 minimum in your GRE, then this is probationary, which is kind of, they can give you an offer if you have this, that's up, and you can see other information, application fees, and all the other stuff you need to know, right, so we have established one thing now, so you, 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 you've seen how you can easily check the program you want to apply for, if they accept um, bachelors, been able to confirm for from two different universities two different programs that what you need to apply for you to apply for a phd program is your bachelor's and we also see a program where you need to have a master's first before you can apply for a phd so it is not cast in stone it's not the same for every program but at least you've seen that it is first it is possible it is feasible right that you can use your your bachelor's to apply for a phd program so all you need to do is just to check right and it's very important that you do your own due diligence irrespective of the information i share here is still expected of you to do your own research right and to verify for yourself so i hope you've been able to gain some valuable tips in this video and uh, another advice I will give you is if you are preparing to apply for fall 2022 academic year, which of course is starting, most schools have started, have, you know, started accepting applications, then you should start preparing for that. Get all your necessary documents, your transcript, get it ready. Don't wait till you are about to, you know, apply or submit your application before you start doing that. It might take you some time. You need your, you need to have your student copy, you know, to make your unofficial copy for you to use in your application, and also get your CV, get your SOP writing out, get your recommendations. Who are your recommenders? Let them know ahead of time that you are applying to social schools. And that will help you to facilitate the fast application process. And reach out to faculties where necessary. Request for waiver where necessary. Application fee waiver where necessary. Write the necessary test. And I wish you the best. Your application. And see you in my next video. Bye for now.